How are you today? Hello, Joe. Dad? Yeah. The ice has turned into poop. No, it's not poop. It's it's mud, see? Yeah, but it smells like poop. You could say the uh, silliest things. Anyway, hi. It's really warm today. As you know, we're just kind of hanging out, waiting for another little guy to arrive. He'll be here in hopefully, hopefully a couple weeks. So I was going through a lot of our footage from last season down in Florida and everything. I remember when I did the RV tour video, I said I would show you around our stabilization jack. So you, you probably are getting to know me a little bit already and probably get to know that I love to do this kind of stuff, kind of fiddling around with things. And I would say that next to traveling, doing the fiddling stuff, getting ready for traveling is something I, I like, I really, really enjoy. So as I was looking around, I saw in magazines that they have this uh, stabilization system with bars that will make it so that they don't move side to side. And I thought, you know what, maybe I can build something like that. So I thought I'd give it a try. I wanted to show you the two things that I use the most for doing this type of stuff. The first one is my Hobart wire feed welder. These things are really cool. This is a gasless model, so I put in flux core wiring. Um, makes it really easy to weld, and it makes really good welds on you know smaller type of material. The other one is my chop saw, which I just remember now I sold in our garage sale to get ready to uh, to move. Right, so I don't have it here. But those two things really help be able to make all kinds of stuff. And so I thought I'd show you real quick how they're built and how we use them, okay? So I got all the materials from my favorite store, which is the surplus store. So what I did was I found two pieces of pipe so they easily slide in and out. And then I just used some, some steel right there and made some brackets. So I got a bracket here and then I welded a bracket on the foot of the stabilizer and then I have that bar set up right there. Now this part is the key. I took a nut and I welded it to the galvanized metal and just a note if you're welding galvanized stuff puts off some you know gases and things so make sure to protect yourself with that but um weld the nut right on there and then i have a bolt that i welded a little bar on it makes us able to lock it in place it's a big snow so when we get somewhere i come down under here i unscrew these a little bit and i reach under here unscrew that one as well then i take my dewalt drill then tighten these up and then give it one little more turn just to make sure it's in there. So those stabilization bars essentially lock this jack in place. Now, next time you're at your camper, I encourage you put your stabilization jacks down, go inside the camper and maybe send your kids in there and then sit next to it and watch it as people are walking around. You'll see that stabilization jack moving all over the place. Now, a lot of times people will try to figure this out and they will say, you know what? I can get our camper to move less if we put in one of those one of those trucks right inside the wheels. Now those do work well to, to lock your wheels together, but they don't help as much with stabilization because the ends of your camper is pretty far away from this point right here. And so just by locking these together won't do much. You really got to lock your stabilization jacks down so that they won't move when people are at the front or the back of the camper. So that's essentially how they're built and how we use them. But now I wanted to bring you into some footage that I shot this summer and show you a modification that I made to them that helped even more. So let's check that out right now. This plate right here was part of the original trailer and I think it was set up so that they could have those um, power jacks. So this camper didn't come with power jacks, but they set it up so that you could get it as an option. I put on these little uh, bars here so that I could turn them without having to turn them with a wrench because I didn't like that So now I could just go reuse my hand and turn it but that one is freshly welded So it's pretty hot, but what I'm working on right now is a little bit bigger foot for on the uh, The platform down here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna weld it right like that So as you can see there I have more of a, a square foot So I'm using that part right there, and then I got this extra spot so it'll essentially make my uh, stabilizer foot about 10 inch by 10 inch, about the size of those uh, those little Lego type things that you use and people usually stick underneath there. And so I like having a foot on here because if it directly touches the ground, then it gives more stabilization. I don't know if welding is good for a camera or not, but just make sure you put your eye protection on. Alright, 
so I got this welded on. This is what I end up with, with a big foot. So, much better. Now I'm gonna spray paint it. I gotta do the other side. Now I got the project done, at least on the front. I'll show you what I got here. So now I got this nice square pad right there. And if you see the other one, I don't know if you can see it. Pretty much the same. Pretty happy with how they turned out. I got my glove and the paint here a little bit, so it's got a little bit of white on it. But spray painted the bars up. Got rid of some of the rust with a, a wire brush and sprayed it with rust-oleum. So here's what I'm doing on this side here. Gonna just add a couple strips of, of iron to each side of the foot. So here's this foot. And on this one, I attach the bar to the bumper, and then I attach the bar further up at one of those brackets again. So then on this one, I just made a single bracket to catch both of them. What I'm thinking here, is attaching these like that so then I have these two bars on either side and it'll give me much uh, a much bigger footprint I think anyway when you have your stabilizers touch the ground you get much more stabilization because you don't have anything that it can rub on like when I put it on one of those blocks sometimes it can just rub on the block because it doesn't have good contact with it so if I can put this into the ground and get it to sink a little bit but then hold on to the ground That'll make it much more stable inside. So that was my thoughts with this now. So I did it up front, I did it in the back. I'm not gonna do it in the middle ones, just because those are just really meant to get the weight off of the springs. So there's some stabilization in the middle of the camper. So got this one done, but let's go over there to that side. Okay, so I got those feet done. Got those extra bars on the side. Got them painted up pretty nicely too. So you can just see, just at the, on the asphalt here, they sit pretty well. And that's gonna provide even more stabilization in the camper. So let's go in there and check it out. So I got the front ones down, back ones down, and locked in. Oh yeah, dude. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our stabilization video here. If you have any questions on this at all, feel free to drop them below. I'll be glad to hang out. And then let me know what you've done. Have you done something like this? Have you actually bought a system like this? Because I know they sell them out there. So if you've purchased one, how did it work for you? Um, also, I'm really interested to know the newer systems that they have on campers, that they're power jacks and they have the two bars that go on each side. And I've always looked at that and thought, oh, I wonder if that provides a lot of stabilization. So if you have a newer camper that has one of those power jacks, let me know how stable it is. And um, you see, you know, if I'd love to be able to go to a power system that doesn't need those sidearms. So I saw that. If you have one of those, let me know how you like it. Okay, I'm really interested to know if that would be a good upgrade for our camper or if that's just something I should wait till we get a new rig. Cause I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to go with something new once that baby comes here. Cause uh, we're gonna be pretty tight in there with the whole extra dude. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having a great day. Be sure to subscribe below and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks, bye-bye.